Good morning ladies and gents. Today we're going to have a look at using pivot tables in Excel 2013 to, as it says here on the screen, to do big data. To help us analyze, say, a whole year of class data. So in Excel, I'm just going to click across to the next tab, and in that tab we have a year group set of data. We have, I scroll down, 175 sets of data, so a year group for first name, surname, form, set, sex, and some assessment data for these learners. Now, traditionally in a, a set of data like this, one of the first things we'd want to do is we might want to know what the, the difference between the boys and the girls um, overall might have been or we might want to look at what um, each set has done compared to each other set. Now that would normally, have in, normally involve sorting the data, putting all of the girls at the top, all the boys at the bottom maybe, and taking some averages. Multiple sorting could end up with multiple charts that we're trying to get from this data. All fine, and there's nothing complicated with that, except it actually takes quite a long time to do. Using pivot tables, we can streamline and automate an awful lot of that process. So let's have a look at using a pivot table. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to highlight all of the data in my data range, and I am going to click on Insert Pivot Table. And a box will come up saying, where's your data range, which I've already selected. And then it says, where do you want to put this pivot report? Do you want to put it in a new worksheet or in an area on the existing worksheet? Well, I'm just going to put it in a new worksheet, which will open up a new tab on the bottom. And what you're left with is kind of quite a scary looking blank box with nothing in. And on the right hand side of the screen, over here, some fields with some kind of boxes, something going on down here. It's not immediately obvious what you do. But let's start by clicking in some of these boxes which will add the data into the table. So, I want to know about the learners that I've got. I want to know about the children that's going on here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, maybe I want to know about the forms that the children are in, the sets that they're in. I might want some information about the sex of those learners and we're going to pick the, the final option there, which is the TA, the teacher assessment for these learners. So I've highlighted one, two, three, four bits of information, which has dragged them across into the table on this side of the screen. Now, whether or not that makes any sense or not is down to us to think about what's going on here. So this is summarizing the data by form and breaking the form into D1, D2, D3, the sets, and then it's breaking the sets into sexes, males and females. It's kind of a hierarchy, isn't it? Form, set, sex, which is the same order that I've got them here. Form, set, sex. So the first thing I'm going to think about is the, the data here itself. It says sum of teacher assessments. So what Excel is doing is it's taking the te teacher assessment levels and it's adding them up for each of these things. And if I scroll to the bottom, I anticipate, there it is, there's a grand total. So if you add up all of the levels for all of these children in this, in this year group, you get a total of 845, which is a meaningless figure. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on grand total, right click, and click on remove grand total it doesn't make any sense. So it's a bit more useful. So now I'm going to click in there and on the right hand side of the screen, the bottom here it says sum values, little sigma sign, sum values, and it says sum of teacher assessments. Now that doesn't make sense either, does it? Within each class summing up the levels. So I'm going to click on sum of teacher assessment and I'm going to click on value field settings opens up a little box and here I can say sum them, count them, that doesn't make sense, counting them, how many, just tell you how many people are in each class, but what does make sense is the average. I'm going to click on OK. 
So now you can see that the data table has changed and we've got some averages of the levels in each of these classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick on the data and I'm going to reduce the formatting on it so that it makes sense. Here we go. I'll center it as well. So now we've got form, set, sex, and we've got some indication of the average level in each of these sets. Now maybe that doesn't quite make sense in terms of having form, set, and sex. If I click down in the bottom right hand corner and I highlight where it says set with the left mouse button, click and hold, it's, it's indicated it's changed color, it's gone to a selection color, and I'm going to click and drag it above form. You see it goes from being set and as I drag it, it changes and as I drag it above form, it puts that green line above form. If I take my mouse button off it there, the data has now changed in the data table to be set form sex. So it's altered the order with which the data has been organized. Now maybe we, are, we kind of think that, that doesn't really make much sense because form doesn't matter. So I'm going to push form up into filters. Take my finger off the mouse. And now I've got set, sex, and some scores. So I've summarized the data by set and sex. Now, if we don't like the look of that table, I could pick up, say, sex and push it into a column. So now the data table has changed to show me the rows, which are the sets, because that's what we've got down here in the settings here, the rows of the sets. And now we've got columns for male, female, and male for the sexes because that's what we said to put the columns in. And again a grand total which doesn't mean anything so I'm going to right click and remove grand total because it doesn't mean anything. So just tidy up that a little bit, make it all in the center. So now I can look down that table and I've got each set broken into sexes. Okay, kind of makes sense I guess. I'm going to pull sex back down over here and Ideally, when we're analyzing data, we don't just want a table. We want a chart of some description. So I'm going to click inside the pivot table, and I'm going to click on Analyze Pivot Chart. And quite clever, works out that the kind of data requires a column chart. So I'm just going to click on OK. Drag it to the top a little bit so we can see it better. And I'm just going to tidy it up, I'm going to remove the legend, and while we're here I'm going to give it a title straight away, and I'm just going to call it Year 7 Science Results, just so we know what this is. Okay, turn off all the formatting things. So here we have a chart showing you the sets D1, D2, D3, M1, M2, M3, and M4, broken into male and female results showing you the levels. Now that kind of makes some sense. It helps us look at the data. If I click in the pivot chart now, though, at the bottom where we've got set and sex, they're still live. So if I pick them up and push sex above set, the chart changes to reflect that. So now we've summarized it by all of the girls and then all of the boys broken into the individual sets. Let's do that again. I'm going to put set above sex. So now it's summarized it by set, which has then been broken into male and female. Kind of makes some sense, doesn't it? Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some of the extra features of Excel 2013. See the little boxes on the chart? They allow you to click on them and just turn off the men. If I click on OK, the chart will now just show me all the females. Now I'm not going to go through that one in detail. I'm going to turn on the female, the males again, so the chart back where it started, and I'm going to turn off all of these formatting options. Okay, I'm going to go analyze, field buttons, hide all the field buttons. So now we've just got to check what looks like a chart. It's the same pivot table chart, but there's none of those buttons on there. I'm now going to do another of the different features of Excel 2013, which is the ability to add, insert, 
these things called a slicer. So I'm going to click on insert slicer and a slicer is Excel's way of saying kind of the old-fashioned slice and dice the data. How do you want to look at the data? What do you want to manipulate? So I'm going to say let me manipulate form, set, sex, those kind of options. Form, set and sex. And I'm going to click on OK. And Excel will put on top of my worksheet some buttons. OK. Drag those buttons so we can see them. So by default they're all blue. But if I come along to the sex button and I click on female, it will turn off or turn on just the females. The male has gone white, you can see. But my chart has changed to reflect that selection. So now I've got set 1, 2, 3, M1, M2, M3 and M4 for just the females. Click on males, the chart for just the males. If I click on the little arrow, the X at the top right hand corner, it will turn off the filters and the chart goes back to how it was. If I look at sets down here, if I click on D1, it will show me just D1. So now I've got the breakdown of D1 for male and female. If I hold down Shift, I can select a couple in a row. So set D1, D2 and D3. And if I hold down Control, I can select a non-contiguous range, just like you would in Excel normally. So there we go, D1, D2 and D3 compared to M4. Turn off the filter, they all disappear. The pivot table still behaves as the pivot table. So if I pick up set and push it above sex, the chart responds as it did before. So now we're grouping them by sex and then set. Slicers still work. Click on D1, shows you the breakdown of D1 as you'd expect. And if I click on female, it shows me the female only. So a very quick way of analyzing your data, of taking a large data set and performing multiple charts and multiple calculations to help you visualize your data is by using pivot tables in Excel and some of the new features of Excel 2013.